G'day folks. The other week I made a video and put it on Facebook about um, the little fairings that I, I made just mucking around in the shed. And a bunch of you asked for a bit more of an in-depth, detailed version on how I did that. So I figured I might make a video, make a series actually, of um, and I'll title it, How Did Donnie Do That? A few videos ago now, I made one about how I made this. So this is actually the second video of that series. Okay. For this demonstration, I've got a piece of 5005.8 mil. So what's that, 30 thou? So it's different material to what I used on this. This is 7075 T6 and it's 16 thou. I just wanted to demonstrate on this one how far you can stretch this material as opposed to folding it because it'll split when you fold it, but you can stretch it such a long way. And it weighs 35 grams total. That's with the two pieces, this piece and this piece. So half of that is just that. Anyway, but for this demonstration, we'll use something that you can buy at the local hardware store and um, it'll work hard and then shape up to something that I would stick on and use on a aircraft. Not as a structural piece, but it'll be good enough for an air scoop or a headrest or, a, you know, whatever, secondary structure. So this is the markings. I've drawn, I've drawn my center line. That line there is basically the end of the flare. So the end of, end of this. So we still need to have room for the, for the foot um, where it mounts to the airframe. And obviously that's what these two are as well. So we're going to work our way through here and raise that up. This is my English wheel that I'll use. It's almost the cheapest version I can find. And it's perfect for what we're doing here with light gauge aluminium. So we've got the, the fixed wheel at the top here and this is the wheel that you can change. And this is the sharpest radius that I've got out of the series. So you get a bunch of, over here, all the different shapes. So right down the bottom is, is the sharpest radius and that one there is a flat. So we'll use that later on. But you can sort of select which radius and curve that you want to use for different things. Like the engine cowl was a series of different versions. We're gonna start, we're gonna up it with just this one today and see how far we can stretch this piece of material just for fun. I haven't managed to uh, perfect the ability to film and form at the same time. It just gets all messy and wobbly and everything like that. So this is a bit of an overview of what I'm trying to do. So this is our center line and that's the edge we're gonna work up to. And um, these are the two edges where the flange will start working. So we're gonna run up and down here and then I'll probably work across like this as well because that brings it up a little bit better and then we'll continue on here. So set it all in there and then you just run it all the way through and back again. And we do this many times like that. And also, obviously you, I don't run all the way up to the end there. It's really difficult and it pops off. So I'll have to run carefully along this edge here and go back that way. So run it sideways like that. And then we work our way across and back again. So basically you're overlapping the, the um, wheel marks in the material and that, that moves all of the material, if you know what I mean. And then we go back along like this and we just continue doing that until we get the desired shape and, um, Eventually, we'll get to a certain point where this wheel, you won't be able to form any any sharper than that. Um, and then that's about when we're done. And then we change the out and we'll start working on the flanges. So effectively, that's all we're doing. It's just running it through back and forth along that line and getting that shape and then going sideways like this. And you see how I just wobble it a little bit. So that just moves the sheet across in the in the job and back again like that all the way along and then we go back in this way so it's crisscross actions 
and working our way around. And then we adjust the tension to, to work harder and everything like that. So, geez, I, I haven't even put much pressure on that and we, you can see we're already starting to work. All right, so that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, we just wheel that, adjust that up so it just touches for now and then we can add tension a little bit later on. Put our piece in and we start working our way along the line. So, yeah, it's only just touching at the moment and we just back and forth. And we'll start working that up. A bit more tension. Let's just raise this in the center for now, and then we'll start working crossways and everything. You can see we've got a raise there already. So we'll just start working and continue on with that. I might start moving over in these areas a little bit more. Probably not in this area, but maybe stretch further up here because we will end up with a a shape like that. What I'm doing is forming this way, making a triangle effectively because we, we want to hold that edge there and we'll, we'll trim this off later on and it'll have that shape that we want afterwards. So, um, starting to get there. A big thing is to not concentrate in one area as opposed to the other. I wanna lift this area a bit more, so I'll concentrate on that, but I've gotta be aware not to make a, a flat spot or a dish in here. So, I'll concentrate on lifting this bit but I'll also start flaring it, uh, flaring it back up into here, the stretch as well. And now we've got a bigger raise in the back here now, I just need to work on the front. The reason why I roll this way and then across this way, it just changes the pattern and sometimes you get a bit more of a lift out of the material when you change direction of the wheel. Looking good. I want to raise a little bit more in the back here. So I'll concentrate down there a little bit. Okay, that's pretty pretty good. Reckon we can try a bit more and see how far we get. So I've got my special stick here. It's not really special, it's just a stick with a randy bit on it. So I'm just using that to encourage a nice shape around the front just to work out some of the little bits just to help encourage the shape that we're after 
So we've pretty much maxed out our um, shape in the English wheel. Um, so that's about, from the black mark there, it's about a inch rise. And now that gap, it, I think it started off as a flat piece about three inches. Um, now that's about two inches across there. Okay, now we've got to make the flange where it's going to fit onto the airframe. So that's what this bit here is. This is all um, waste now. I've got to cut that away because that's now going to interfere with how we're going to work this bit. So nothing technical here. I'm sure there's many technical ways of doing about it, but I redrew my center line and I just drew one side out to make it look cool. What I reckon, so mark one iometer and a bit of T-lar, so that looks about right. And then I just transferred those numbers over and got this line as well. So that's about where we're going to go. And that's our starting point. Um, if you wanted to get really accurate, you could make a form block to sit this in. And then you can just um, form the, the flange in. But uh, I don't feel like doing that today. I'm just going to do this. Okay, I've trimmed this around and polish these edges because they're going to stretch now so any little marker or nick in them when you're stretching it you can split it through there so we don't want that and I've got my flat wheel now instead of the the sharp round one and um, we'll just start working our mark around the flange and then working out what needs stretching and how far so first off we'll wind that right up until it just touches and that'll be a good start, a starting point for how much tension we're going to put on. So there we go. Now, we just follow that line all the way around. Put a little bit of a kink in it. And just define where that line's going to go. Obviously at the back here is where all of the stretch is going to happen mostly. All right, we've just started there. It's a very faint line, but you can sort of see we're starting to work this area and then we'll go around from there. So remembering to stretch in here, you have this part out here needs to stretch twice as much. So quite often I'll run around the outside edge until it goes a bit whoopy. And then I'll move on into this inner line. And then that'll give this piece here places to stretch into. How are we looking? Starting to get there. So um, just need to work on this area a bit more, stretch more in that area. So we'll just keep going. Looking good. Still need, that's pretty close there, but we still need to raise these sides. So we'll go again. There we looking. Oh, we're getting close. Just need to raise those, raise this side up a bit more. At the back there is pretty flat, so we just need these sides to meet it now. Pretty close. I reckon we can tweak that from there. So we're very close to finished. See, it's quite nice. There's just a slight whoop in just this area here where because I was, I just upped it raw with the uh, English wheel and not used a proper former, there's just a slight rise between 
um, front and rear. So, so it just rises in this area a little bit. We can manipulate that a little bit. So I'll just give that a quick little dressing and then we can start trimming down these flanges to the correct size and squaring off the front there like that. And um, we're pretty done. done there now so um, that's a, a two inch by about an inch high opening uh, maybe a little bit higher than an inch I'm not quite sure I'll measure it in a bit um, sits pretty flat it's not bad compared considering I just did it by eye but um, if I wanted to match it to an airframe I'd spend more time doing that once you work out its location on the airframe then you can go around and tweak the the flange down so it sits beautifully but um yeah there we go time to give her a clean up now huh so a couple of dollars of aluminium bought from the local hardware store and a couple of uh, hours of bashing and and tweaking in the shed um, with basic tools um files and lumps of wood and all of that sort of stuff. Yes, I use an English wheel buried in over there somewhere, um, but you don't have to. Um, this can, these flanges, the way we did that is the same principle as any other flared fitting like that. So I'm thinking um, control cables that are coming out to your rudder and elevator, um, same principle. So you guys can do this. Just think a little bit and give it a go. It's totally worth it. Here's an interesting piece. So that's just some scrap from before and I'll just mark it out. That'll be fun. Let's see what we can do with that, huh? Mm -hmm. 